Today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the DC Collectibles, the new Batman Adventures, number 8, Poison Ivy. Of all the figures to get a retro fit for the new Batman Adventures, one of my personal favorites was Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, Two-Face, and I'm trying to think of the other one that really... Mr. Freeze was also the one of the ones that I really was happy with the changeover when they went to the new Batman Adventures. Harley, uh, Harley Quinn stayed the same and uh, Joker got a dra drastic changeover which I wasn't happy with it as well but Scarecrow also was a good for the most part I would think except for Joker all the changeovers were I think for the better Clayface I think could have been a little bit better too but yeah Poison Ivy very very cool the way she ended up looking with more of a greenish colored skin she looked less like one of those 50s vixens and instead she just looked like a real terrifying menace that is number eight from the new batman adventures the same line also giving us the animated series figures spin around the back of the package you will see nothing absolutely nothing you will see www.dccomics.com you will also see www.comicsshoplocator.com but other than that you've got nightwing you got tim drake robin and you got batman just in silhouette form. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up, but when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the DC Collectibles, the new Batman Adventures, number eight, Poison Ivy. There's more Henny Way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Okay, so Poison Ivy couldn't get her to stand, so she's just laying down for the time being. And Spot also wants to correct himself from the beginning of this review where I commented that uh, Harley Quinn was one of my favorite changeovers. I actually did mean Poison Ivy. Okay, so let's open up the little pamphlet that comes included with Poison Ivy. We've seen these before. One side, you've got Batman, the animated series. The other side, the new Batman Adventures. And on the back of that, we've got Batman, Two-Face, uh, Mr. Freeze, Catwoman, the Joker, Robin, Man-Bat, Poison Ivy, Killer Croc and Baby Doll, Robin, the Creeper, and Harley Quinn. I think the only one that we haven't had a look at on this channel is Man Bat and Killer Croc, but everything else, still loving these figures. You also get yourself an instruction guide showing you how to put together a display stand. You can already see that I've taken the liberty of doing that to save us a little bit of time. It also shows you how to put together the Joker, it shows you uh, how to change out the hands of Poison Ivy, nothing new there, and how to change out Man Bat's wings. And we'll put that to the side. Okay, so, actually, you know what? Before we look at Harley, uh, I was going to say it again. Before we look at Poison Ivy, it actually just so happens that Spot just finished the review of uh, Harley Quinn. That's why I got Harley on the brain. She does come with a character turnaround display stand featuring the front, the side, and partial side back of uh, Poison Ivy. That's so that the designer animators can see the full turnaround of the character. We've got... The Poison Ivy new Batman Adventures on the one side. And of course, you've got your clear display stand. The clear display stand has the adjustable top to it. It's just a little tight. This moves back and forth and can come out. And then this section moves up and down. So it accommodates all the different characters. I still feel like there's too much excess on the back. But if you really wanted to, you could probably just cut that off. So there is the display stand, which I would say... Poison Ivy is one of those other figures that would require the display stand. She just will not stand on her own. The culprit, as well as most of the figures, the culprit tends to be the little small feet. Just does not let her stand. At least, does not let her stand on this backdrop. On a flat surface, maybe yes. On this backdrop, maybe no. Likely no. Some of the accessories that also come with uh, Poison Ivy... She comes with a couple of different vials, little scientific flasks. She doesn't come with a lab table though, so like a lot of this stuff seems foreign. And she comes with a green beaker with some green liquid at the bottom. And she comes with a smaller beaker style flask, which has a little red at the bottom there. It really, it's cool that they would have given that, but to be honest, none of these, because they don't have a table, there's nothing really you can do with them. They just sit to the side. If you ask me, it would have been a perfect opportunity to just give us a little plant pot, with like a Venus flytrap 
Doesn't have to be big, could be maybe just about that size. And instead of spending efforts to make plastic vials, could have just given us that instead. She could have even held it, could have moved the arm out, could have just bent the elbow, and could have just had her holding the uh, little pot of a Venus flytrap. Something like that, I think, could have worked perfectly. But she does not come with that. Okay, so let's have a look at the figure. I would normally say the figure, well, like Harley Quinn, Joker, uh, Robin is also a good example too. A lot of those seem more inspired by the original Kenner released figures than the animated series treatment. Theoretically, one could say, well, this character is, this Poison Ivy is based more on her animated series treatment because she never got a figure release. She did get the original 50s Vixen Poison Ivy in a figure release that came with a crossbow. But theoretically, technically, she did come also in a pack where we got this style of Poison Ivy. It was like a five pack. I can't remember the name of it now, but there was a Poison Ivy available in that. There was also even a Talia available in the same, not the same box set, but I think in, in its own box set. So she did technically get released in a figure form. It didn't look anything as good as this. In fact, that figure figure wasn't very good, to be honest. This figure, though, is awesome. It could be probably one of my favorites. Up there with Two-Face and Mr. Freeze is my favorites from this line so far. They do everything very, very right with this figure. The red color in the hair is a nice touch, as well as the sculpt of the hair is exceptional. She's got that off-white skin color. So... In the original animated series, Poison Ivy, if you remember, basically just nice green kind of loincloth kind of dress, and then her skin was regular flesh color, and then for the revamp, they gave her a more dead-like skin complexion, where it was this off-white, but it had a green color to it. Very cool, though. She's lanky. She's not as lanky. Let's reach off to the figure that we just had a look at. There's Harley Quinn. I don't know if it's just me either, but seeing Poison Ivy physically in hand and now comparing her to Harley Quinn, am I the only one that sees that this one just is a far better figure, that this one just kind of now pales in comparison? I don't know. Also, head-wise, look how big Poison Ivy's head is versus Harley Quinn's. Harley Quinn's head is small versus that of Poison Ivy. Now, you could say, well, I'll be technically... Her head ends here. It's about the same size, but everything is much smaller on Harlequin than on Poison Ivy. But a good pairing, certainly, if you want to have the two together as they teamed up in the in the series and comics. We'll move Harlequin out of the way. Other things that come with Poison Ivy is she comes with a series of different hands. Ironically enough, though, she gives you they give you gripping hands as if she is supposed to hold something. One is a closed fist, the other one is a closed fist, and two holding hands. But really, aside from giving her, pardon my arm for a second, aside from giving her like the beakers, which don't really fit into her hand, you can see that the hand is not designed to really fit this. Why they would give her partially open hands, suited for almost holding a weapon, and yet they don't give her a weapon at all. Just one of those mysteries in life. Uh, but I do really like this figure. There's a lot, a lot that I like to it. It still is a little problematic, especially with her legs. Her legs have this weird bowed effect that even if you bend the legs, her legs, no matter how you pose them, unless you pose them close together, which is maybe what they intended for, you spread them further apart, she has this weird kind of bow leg look to them. Other than that, I think the figure is perfect. Don't think there's really anything I would change to her. Articulation on Poison Ivy, her head is on a ball joint. Ball, well, hind joint shoulders. A little stiff, I must say, moving the arms out, so I'm not gonna fight them too much. The arms do rotate all the way around. She has a bend in the elbow, which also rotates the forearm, a swivel and hinge. In the wrists, no waist swivel. Legs go forward and back. They hinge out. She has a bend at the knee. Doesn't rotate the lower leg. 
And finally, she has a pivot in the foot. Weighing in with all the other figures that we've had a look at on this channel, I think my favorite, one of my favorites, has to be Poison Ivy here. And it's just funny, though. Once you start looking at her versus Harley Quinn, I just feel like Harley Quinn ends up looking a little more disappointing as a result. This one strongly feels like it's channeling the Kenner line. This one strongly feels like, I feel like it channels more so the animated series rather than, of course, the figure. If you can find Poison Ivy, of I think so far of all the figures, definitely would say pick her up for sure. Today's Toy Spot, we were looking at the DC Collectibles Batman The New Adventures, or New Adventures of Batman. We're looking today at Poison Ivy, a stellar figure. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more Toy Spots in your way. Thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time.